Hi, this is Andrea Fallon Core with Aspire Performance Coaching, where I use sports psychology to help both athletes and coaches gain a mental edge. I can be a resource for those who are struggling with performance issues, as well as those who want to gain a leg up on their competition and increase their mental toughness. Today, I wanted to focus on exploring the relationship between a coach's expectations of athletes and that athlete's performance. In other words, looking at how a coach's belief in that athlete really influences that athlete's athletic performance. And what we can do is we can actually break this down into four steps. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first step is a coach forming expectations of an individual athlete and what their potential actually is. The coach can get this from two different areas. One are person cues. These are typically physical characteristics of that athlete. So looking at things like race, um, physical size, maybe even possibly socioeconomic status and, and other things like that. The second area of expectations is really looking at performance information. So looking at things like uh, past accomplishments, maybe doing skill tests, how that athlete performs in practices and what their behavior is in practice, and maybe even talking to other, other coaches that that athlete has worked with. Now, if there is an accurate assessment of that individual's ability and potential, there's not going to be a problem. However, if the coach has too high of expectations or too low, what's going to happen is that coach is actually going to engage in inappropriate behaviors um, and will have a drastic impact in that athlete's performance. Now, the second step after forming those expectations is those expectations actually influence the coach's behavior in three different ways. Interactions, instruction, and feedback. So looking at interactions, a coach's expectations of an athlete influences the frequency and the quality of the interactions with that athlete. Without meaning to, most coaches spend more time with those athletes they have higher expectations of, and they show more warmth and positive regard towards that athlete. The coach also spends more quality and quantity of instruction with the athletes. So with lower expectation athletes, what happens is that um, coaches actually, without meaning to establish lower, lower levels of performance, and so they actually give less instruction to them. Feedback is also related in the type and the frequency of feedback that the coach provides. More reinforcement and praise typically go to higher expectation athletes after a successful performance, while less beneficial feedback goes to those lower um, expectation athletes. So things like praise after a mediocre performance, when a coach would never give that same praise to those who they expected more of. Now the third step in this process is that those coach behaviors actually affect the athlete's performance, particularly for those who a coach has lower levels of expectation for. So those low expectation athletes typically exhibit poor performance, number one, because they likely receive less playing time, but number two, because they receive less quality instruction and feedback. So they exhibit lower levels of confidence because they see that they aren't being treated the same and they don't have as much belief in their abilities. And then they attribute their failures or their poor performance to a lack of ability rather than to other things. So the fourth step in this process is that the actual athlete's performance confirms the coach's expectations. So it communicates to the coach that they were actually right in their initial assessment, even though they've had a drastic influence on this entire process. And this kind of perpetuates this, this ongoing cycle. So as a coach, it's really important for you to explore three different things. Number one, how you form those actual expectations of your athletes and what you base those expectations on. Two, Kind of determining whether those sources of information are actually reliable indicators of an individual's ability. And three, looking at really how you're going to monitor both the quality and quantity of instruction, reinforcement, and feedback you give to all of your athletes to make sure that all of their athletes get their fair share and all of them are able to, um, to reach their full potential.